documentary Aunt Westra has photographed Māori throughout the nation, her images evoking passion and debate on how Māori are portrayed. Today, at age 76, she's a recognised icon of New Zealand arts. But this summer, Aunt Westra has been on a very personal journey. She's been returning with her photos to the heart of Ngāti Poro, Tūhoi, Te Arawa and Whanganui, to the communities who challenged, accepted and taught her well. The exhibition is called Full Circle, but for this queer, it is a thank you and a very special hokinga mai. Ngahuia Wade went behind the lens with Arns Westra. I'm here because I'm still on my feet. <laughs> well, I'm the main exhibit. <laughs> but I was at Waitangi one time. Tita Fai said, mm, you're still hanging around. And uh, yeah, sorry, I'm still here. <laughs> I have very fond memories of traveling among Maori. They've taught me so much. So I've gone back to the places I photographed in the early 60s. I've come full circle. I came to New Zealand in 1957 and I came to visit my father who had settled in Auckland. I was supposed to have stayed for six months, but I'm still here. Yes. I came from a very Dutch background, very, very uh, controlled, really. Oh, you got, you got all <laughs> Maori taught me how to have family life and accept the children and relate to them. <laughs> they taught me the love of the extended family. So that's what this exhibition is about. <laughs> I'm driving myself to take the photos back. And I'm 76 years old now. I like to be camping free and having the freedom to stop wherever I like. We called the camper van Aans with double A because when I came here especially, um, my name is Aans with a single A, but the English people would say Aans, so I, I wanted to emphasize it's got to be a Maori A, which is very similar to the Dutch A, Aans. I try to learn through observing and through, through um, talking to people and getting them to expre express how they feel. That's been the strength of my work, really. I try to f see the common human element in, you know, everybody.
My favorite photo is from Boschte at the Pa, taken in Ruatoria. The special thing about the picture is the, the look of the light on the child's face. There was a story unfolding in front of my eyes of these children who were kept at home while mother could do the washing, the family wash on the back lawn in the tub. standing on the lid of the stove, which is apparently what she always did to warm her feet. And that became the controversial picture. And of course, I was later accused that this was developed in the mind of a Pakeha woman, and none of that was real. But I, I never set anything up and never interfered with what they were doing either. But there were far more important things in life than this, this Pakeha woman who was hanging around. <laughs> I was quite maternal. I don't think a man would have done the same kind of photos in my position because the female in me sort of responded to, to um, how people were with small children. I was only once nearly arrested for photographing kids on the beach. <laughs> this, this policewoman came and, and I said, can't you photograph here? No, there's no law against it, but somebody had complained. I know exactly who complained. I can see it in the photos. There was this poor father who was buried in the sand and I photographed the kids bouncing around him, but I can see on his face he was getting more and more angry with me. <laughs> and I hadn't picked up on that. Because usually, usually I do when, when people resent that you photograph them. I've had my run-ins with the Maori action groups. Um, and yeah, the likes of Tita Fai Harawira would question, um, you haven't got a Maori mind. We can't ever, we can only learn, we can only be friendly and, and try to understand why you are how you are. You're working in amongst all those Māori communities. No Māori male tried to whisk you off your feet? <laughs> there have been a few, <laughs> but not a, a few Māori males have, have had, uh, had a Māori. Well, I called him a boyfriend, although it wasn't really, but I had some influence on a, a Māori's life. Um, and yeah, some of them, when I was a solo mother, often I found they, they would be radicals who wanted the Pakeha woman as, as a vengeance, almost a trophy. <laughs> it wasn't for me, on my sake. <laughs> so yeah, there were a few like that, that I had difficulty turning away from the door. <laughs> and I can name names, but I shan't. <laughs> Anne's being who she is and her status as an icon, I mean, there's a lot of people would like a lot from her. And I guess I filter that and take some of that pressure off her. I've made a lot of exhibition prints, I've had exhibitions, and I have a few drawers with some of those prints left over. So he, he sells those to all his rich mates. <laughs> So has he made some money for you? Oh yes, he has. <laughs> As an artist, I'm used to doing this very little, so...
Nans is a special case given her seniority amongst um, New Zealand artists and certainly if she takes a photograph people will instantly uh, will have appeal because of who she is. The people ordinarily, um, they, they don't know who I am. I can still be, be unknown, which helps my work, clearly. People don't pose for me, um, or, or put faces, or, or, or know that the photos might get somewhere or might be used somewhere. I don't get that at all. I, um, yeah. You're a nice old lady now. <laughs> yes, I'm this, this harmless old lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm still here. <laughs>